Greetings, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome. I am the Crypto Crow. We are going to go over millionaire investors' favorite altcoins leaked. A secret tier list. This is by Discover Crypto. Uh, you know, they're they're very bullish on Cardano. I don't know if they're going to talk about Cardano or not in this video. They're probably, I'm going to guess, I have not watched this video yet at all, but I'm going to guess um, they're probably going to start talking about D-PIN and AI tokens this cycle. We're going to find out and we're going to react to it. Here we go. The big money doesn't want... I have a secret list of altcoins that the big money doesn't want you to know about because they want to be involved in the next Solana. They want to be involved in the next Ethereum, but they don't want you involved. And so today we're going to expose venture capital, everybody. If you don't know what venture capital is, it is a form of financing that investors provide to small startup companies like a crypto project that are supposed to have big long-term growth potential, the big payday at the end of the day. And VCs are investing in altcoins and I'm exposing those altcoins. And then we have a tier list of what are gonna be the strongest projects. And when you think of VCs, there's a large list of crypto VCs that have tons of money in the market. You have A16Z, yes, 16 letters between the A and the Z, Coinbase Ventures, Pantera Capital, Binance, and others. And when you look at what they're investing, they're investing tens of millions, if not hundreds of millions of dollars into these projects for the big payday. So let's see, what are they investing in for that big payday? But then we're going to rank what they're investing in because, you know, we're just looking at Coinbase here. It's more like what project are they not involved in? What are they not invested in? And so we have the tier list and we're breaking it down. And I want to give a big shout out to DeFi Mochi. He created this list here and I ended up quote tweeting it and then making a little graphic so we can uh, just kind of look at this together so we have s tier and a tier and we're not going to look at the b tier or the c tier or the avoid at all cost tier that's going to be drift protocol and so when we start with the a tier we're looking at the crypto unlocks and a crypto unlock just simply put is a token unlock where previously locked tokens are released into circulation and become available for trading this is typically going to be a lot of volatility in the short term and a lot of time it is going to be selling pressure to the downside so when you have a big Big token unlock it's going to usually crash the price everybody so the first one we're looking at here is going to be in the a tier and near protocol is the first one we're looking at they have a 6.9 percent increase over the next six months all of these emission percentages are based on a six month timeline and so near is going to increase about seven percent and when we look at near they just have a linear unlock is what they call it it just releases a little bit every single day so it releases uh, between one and two million dollars a near every single day and when you look at the price for near i see some bullish action in the charts now we have been bearish since it topped out you know pretty close to ten dollars a lower low a lower low lower low lower low but then when we go to the three month we finally break the streak and we finally created a higher low so when it comes to near i happen to think that we might be out of the woods and i'm expecting a little bit of a run-up similar to what we saw last time when it went above 20 dollars earlier in the cycle and its market cap around then was only about 12 billion dollars we're only at 4 billion so you can see a 3x for us to hit some previous all-time highs but I think Near can actually hit around $20 billion. There's an AI L1 play, and there's just a lot of bullish action around Near. All right, token number two, GTO. Personally, I like AGI. I like AGI, and I like IAG uh, for uh, storing a lot of that AI. So it is what it is. So 168% increase, there's a giant cliff in December. Cliff in December just basically means a giant unlock is going to be happening. 81 days, they are releasing over 100% of the circulating supply. So GTO is about to have massive selling pressure. I would maybe stay away from GTO. Next up, we have Ton. Now, Ton, I'm also bullish on. You know, it's kind of based from the Telegram team here. Uh, already a high market cap, but they're saying their unlocks is not comparable. When someone asks him why DeFi state of mind, so what do you mean not comparable? Is it in pre-mine phase? What's going on here? Well, they don't actually have that many emissions, but they started as a proof of work blockchain, meaning any computer anywhere could mine a bunch of ton. And it looks like there were some tokens that are already emitted, but we don't know what was allocated to VCs and what wasn't. Also, there's a cluster of wallets that mined a lot of tokens, which were then frozen for four years. So uh, it's a bit complicated, you know, trying to look at the ton token unlocks. That all sounds shady to me. 
me. On the Sorry. A tier, we have Tau, and Tau's only going to have about an 18% increase. And when you look at the price action, you can see we've just been chopping in this range. And right now, we're kind of in the middle of the range. Uh, and so, you know, you could wait for a little bit better entry. But I do think that this coin is going to hit around $1,000 this cycle. But a 3X, you know, people might be wanting a faster horse than a 3X. But now the good part, you said you wanted the S tier. I heard you talking at your screen here. Now we're gonna be looking at Chromia first. It only has a 3.36% increase. And Chromia is a chain with developers and end users in mind. So they're going more for a, you know, a, a powerful ecosystem here, more than a flashy ecosystem. And they're building on RHEL, which is a coding language made by this team. So, you know, it's, it's strong devs, but, but we have yet to see if there's going to be a strong community as well. But if I had to be bullish on Chromia, I would just be bullish on the explosive price action we saw in the past. You can see how insane this pump was there and how insane that pump was there. And we haven't really seen a pump this cycle. Cycle. And so, you know, if, if this is going to be anything like last cycle, there's going to be a couple periods where Chromia just has insane gains. And with the $150 million market cap, uh, you know, you can move the market when the market cap's that small. And you can see in the past, it hit around $800 million market cap, and we're only at 150. So there could be some good days for Chromia ahead. But I'm more bullish on the other two projects. That's Zero and Sui. Now we're going to look at Zero first. Now I will say right off the bat, this suey, sweet, whatever you call it, I'm telling you, and I just talked about this uh, Monday, I think Tuesday. I really think that a lot of the Solana folks, I think the ones in the know are starting to migrate out of their Solana into this suey. Uh, and I, but I don't think that the typical end users catching on yet. I don't think they really realize it yet. They're still so indoctrinated into this like number go up with Solana that they're probably going to ride it straight into the middle of the ocean, but it is what it is. Um, I think C S U I, S U I, uh, I believe that this is basically going to be the next big VC, pushed you know you know paid narrative like i think that this is ultimately going to be what 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 competes with solana by solana people until they've all fully migrated that's just my personal opinion i could be completely wrong i don't even know what he's about to say about it um but i just i think there's a lot more going on with this sui in in a centralized way if you will um then then people really understand right now so we'll see what how that plays out zero zero percent increase in token unlocks but there's a big warning because there's a massive unlock in 2025. now the website i'm using to look at the token unlocks is token.unlocks.app now this is the scary point i was talking about 276 days they have a giant unlock in july they're going to have about 25 percent almost of the circulating supply is going to be released so you got a long ways away but just uh you know something to put in the folder for later 276 days massive unlock but DeFi mochi he brings up a very bullish reason why he likes zero zero's private valuation meaning the vcs they had a valuation of three billion dollars with investors locked for one year so it looks extremely comfy in his words at a 3.8 billion dollar valuation now we look here it's a little bit closer to 3.9 percent but big vcs got in at a three billion dollar valuation and they're looking at a 3.9 billion dollar valuation but what about the last raise now the last raise raised 120 million at a three billion dollar valuation but it is triple the valuation of the previous level so the first vc you know they have it for a billion dollars and then the next raise is three billion so they got a 3x i think a lot of vcs who got in at three billion also want a 3x so they might not sell till it hits around a nine billion or ten billion dollar valuation and so a lot of people they're not really sitting at big gains if you're a vc you don't want to put in a dollar just to pull out a dollar 33. you're going to want to put in a dollar and pull out three dollars five dollars maybe even ten dollars so i'm not worried about vcs So the other side to that too, though, is is that a lot of VCs, the way they invest in, in well, the way they invested in businesses like companies, uh, you know, non non blockchain, non you know, like just traditional companies, is they'd invest in like thirty five different projects, hoping that three to five of them would do exceedingly well and offset any losses of the others that didn't perform or that went away or whatever. I feel like in crypto. 
it's a little different. And here's the one thing that you also have to understand when it comes to crypto. And this is my decentralized versus centralized kind of thought process when it comes to crypto. If in fact, the, the majority of these assets are commodities and not securities, let's say that the majority of them could prove in a court of law that they are utility tokens for some effect, right? That means effectively, now talk to a securities attorney about this, but let's just say that there is a centralized blockchain that's full of venture capitalists and they're doing wash trading and, and they're artificially inflating all kinds of on-chain metrics and they're pushing the price up with all these different tactics and bots and you name it. Let's just say that something like that were to exist. Technically, if it's not a security, I don't think anybody would go after them for it. So let's just say that a project like that exists and everybody's always wondering, how are they not investigated? How does this not happen? How does that not happen? Because if it's not a security, then it's not under the SEC's jurisdiction and therefore it's not likely that they would go after them for any of those activities. Because if it's just a utility token or potentially a commodity, then that would be like the CFTC's job to go into if there was a reason for it. And I think that the laws related to like security and non-security are vastly different, which is one of the reasons why I think we could expect to see potentially a lot of these kind of like, I would say a little bit more, here, here's the thing about this. Just because venture capitalists might go into a project, pump the token value for themselves, the public can look at it as look at the number go up, I want this, and do all of these things related to, you know, progressing the price action, if you will, that doesn't necessarily mean that the project itself is bad. I know that it's to a hardcore purist, which I fight all the time uh, in myself, um, because I see everything that Cardano does and how I feel, I feel secure. Um, and I know everything's all about feelings anymore. I feel, uh, it's not really about, I feel, I feel the way I do because of the research I've done and watching Cardano progress over all these years. So I feel confident in, in what it's building and what it's doing and what it's accomplishing. Right. Um, so when I say, I feel, I say, I feel because of everything that I've seen, researched, studied, read, you, you know, experienced, you name it. All right. That's where my feelings come from. They're not unfounded. But when I look at a lot of the centralized assets out there that are really venture capital driven, some of them can have very worthwhile use cases and, and be legitimate in that sense. They just happen to be projects that venture capitalists through their Ponzi-nomics, tokenomic schemes and, and so forth, where the venture capitalists are more focused on making their money tenfold uh, before you know X happens, whatever X is. And so when I see venture capitalists aping into different projects, that does give me pause because typically if a venture capitalist is in a project in a big way at seed round or earlier in some cases, by the time you're expecting like the price to go up and you're gonna make a bunch of money, right before that happens, the VCs are exiting and you become their exit liquidity, which causes these long pauses, if not complete crashes in their price action. That's one of the reasons why when these projects have like these token locks for the venture capitals or the early phase, early stages, think about it. If these projects launch in the midst of a bear market where there's not much going on anyway, their tokens are locked up for a year, but maybe their unlock state is is like you know the within the first six months of a bull run well that's perfect timing for them to be able to dump on you legally uh, and within the, the confines of their their investment agreements so that's why these to like i'm pretty sure sui sui i'm pretty sure they have a really big unlock coming uh in october if i'm not mistaken and you know once those have concluded and all of the vested interest in the project 
has been has done what it's going to do to the market if the project is truly valid and worthwhile after that point based off of its metrics its milestones its use adoption what it's capable of all of that then the price will have a much easier time at going up. But this is one of the reasons why I find it difficult for me to talk about a lot of these newer projects hitting the crypto space because until something has been proven and it's gotten through that leg of the, like the initial adopters, the initial venture capitalists and all of that, I have a hard time trusting it because I've seen, I can't even count how many times, you know, we, I, myself and other people on YouTube, other crypto uh, evangelists, educators, whatever you want to call us, would get into these projects based off of their idea, their white paper, what they want to do, how they want to try and change the world. And their venture capital is driven. And I and I remember, you know, especially early on, you know, a lot of people would be like, well, this has venture capital, so I, this is going to do really well. And, and oftentimes they would for a period of time until they're not anymore. Because once that venture capitalist has cleared out all their money and they've made their gains, they don't really give a shit about that project anymore. They're off investing into something else. And they're just rinsing and repeating that as much as possible. So while venture capital could be good, getting something off the ground and getting you interested in it, you are supposed to replace the venture capital interest after a certain point. They're able to exit at profit, they're off to the next project, but then that project is left standing on its own merit and its own legs. And if it doesn't have any, that you're not gonna see it again in the next cycle. And that's the risk you take with a lot of this, this like new technology, this new stuff. So just keep that in mind as you're watching a lot of this stuff out there. Um, you know, I, I, I dabble here and there. I'll put a little bit, I'll put a grand into this, a grand into that just to have some and see what it does just to keep it on my radar so I don't forget about it. But I'm I'm basically I'm I'm Cardano man through and through and it's just it's where my heart is it's where I've put all my time since 2017 it's it's basically what uh, what I expect to see do phenomenally well in this market cycle so until next time crow your coins thanks for joining me and I'll see you again soon.